Guns for General Washington. Chapter 16. The Ghosts of Bloody Pond. They had been on the trail all day, but Henry, trying to make up lost time, decided to push on a while longer. At that point, the Becker's wagon was up in front, and J.P. was feeling pleased with himself. With only a little help from his pa, he'd managed the horses like an expert. The heavy vehicles creaked slowly along the narrow trail on the west bank of the Hudson. It was growing dark, and a white mist was creeping across the river. J.P.'s father dozed on the seat beside him. Over his shoulder, the boy could see the other sleds and carts following behind. The drivers and soldiers were surprisingly quiet. Even the animals seemed to doze in their traces as they trudged along. A pale half-moon rose, winking through the pines, while the mist crept in and out of the dark branches. A flight of crows exploded from the trees, complaining loudly at the human intruders. Somewhere, an owl hooted, getting ready to hunt for his supper. J.P. was feeling tired. He was also vaguely uneasy. Looking around, he noticed some landmarks and recognized where he was. Twenty years ago, this part of the countryside had been a bloody battleground. It was during the French and Indian Wars, a time when the French troops and their Indian allies fought the British for control of New England and Canada. The British had finally won, but only after years of heavy fighting. On this very spot, there had been a fierce battle. J.P. had heard the whole story from the old-timers. The fight had raged all day long, seesawing back and forth, and there were many killed on both sides. Some of the bodies had been flung into a nearby pond. It was known ever since as Bloody Pond, and folks said the forest was haunted by the ghosts of those who wouldn't stay down in their watery graves. Inching along with the pines looming overhead, J.P. remembered the grisly tale. His eyes were heavy with sleep, and in the gloom, he thought he could almost see the flitting shades of Bloody Pond. He stifled a cry. Yes, there they were, French soldiers in blue and British in red, their uniforms torn and bloodied, fierce Iroquois wielding war axes, painted mohawks with dripping scalps dangling from their belts. The phantoms were all around him, fighting one another, gliding in and out of the dank mists. J.P. held his breath and listened. Now he heard ever so faintly the sound of Indian war whoops, the snap of muskets, and the screams of the dying. Or were they just the usual noises of the night forest? The boy shivered. (sighs) He shook his head to clear away the frightening ghostly images. Suddenly his two lead horses reared and whinnied in fear. There was a scuffle of hooves as a second pair reacted to them nervously. J.P. tugged hard on the reins. His father woke with a start and dove forward to help. Behind them, the next driver pulled his team with an oath, barely avoiding a pileup. Meanwhile, the spooked horses kept bucking and snorting, refusing to move ahead. Hold steady, John, his father cried. Hold steady. It's the haunts, Pa. J.P. gasped. Bloody pond, the horses can see him. Questions were being shouted up and down the line. Some troopers raced over with a lighted torch, and Colonel Knox rode up anxiously. The troopers ran to the front of the Becker's wagon and bent down. In a moment, they stood up, holding a young colonial soldier between them. The man's hair was matted, his uniform was muddy, and he wore a foolish grin. He also reeked of brandy. When dragged to the side of the trail and doused with water, he came slowly out of his drunken stupor. Questioning him, the colonel learned that the man was from nearby Fort Lyman. Making his way back to camp, he'd lost his way and decided to have a quiet nap in the middle of the trail. Blasted fool, Will Knox shouted. He grabbed the soldier's coat, gave him a tongue lashing, and started him back to the fort with a well-placed kick. Grinning, The colonel took off his hat and wiped his brow. I guess we've had enough ruckus for one day, he said. Pass the word. We'll make camp here. After supper, J.P. rolled himself gratefully in his blankets. 
Luckily, nobody but his father had heard his frightened, panicky outburst. No harm was done, and he was glad that his ghost had turned out to be merely a drunken soldier. Still, John Becker would be very happy in the morning to turn his back on Bloody Pond. And we'll read Chapter 17 next time. Meantime, until then, as Tigger says, ta-ta for now. Thanks so much for listening. Love you guys. Bye-bye.